As we come into sixth density, creation is still creating. Hmm. And in a way that I'm fascinated with, that's my fourth density excitement. But you know, but <laughs> but it's because it still feels like you come to a place in the absolute where it's just still and still moving, but it's always been. And there does seem to be, and I, I think I asked that before, something new manifesting each minute that's unknown. Do you know what I'm saying? There's the... Yeah. I'm, I'd, I'd comment on that by saying that Structurally speaking, nothing new can be created mm -hmm. because from an absolute point of view, which ultimately is the only point of view, all things are timeless. Mm -hmm. So literally anything that can exist already does exist. So what's new is not so much the, the configuration of molecules or mm -hmm. atoms that we influence and create. Those are just, as Bashar would say, actually, those are parallel realities mm -hmm. and we're shifting through them. Thus right. then there seems to be time and change. Right. So it's not that we're creating something new because 10 years from now already exists, all configurations of 10 years from now. But it had to be created 10 years ago. At some point it was created. Oh, I'm saying it was created at the same time the first amoeba was created. All or at once, boom, yes. everything. Correct. Boom. So structurally speaking, like this is not a couch that didn't exist yet in mm -hmm. the creator's mm -hmm. mind. It's just that the way we relate to it, this is where free will comes in, that's what's new the way that we combine all the colors that already exist. Right. You know, it's like a painter has all the colors on their palette, mm -hmm. uh, but it's the way they uniquely combine it and use it that causes a new reflection for the creator to know itself through. Mm -hmm. So, so it's our relationship to the mechanics of what is, the way we relate to it and wake up from it and become aware of it mm -hmm. and feel about it. And that's what generates new relationship by the mm -hmm. one, for the one, through the one, to the one. I don't want to ask how to jump timelines because that's another I mean, how. Don't yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I want to say, I know it's possible. I guess I haven't wanted it, and, or maybe I have and haven't recognized it. Right? I mean, yeah, exactly. Well, is totally, it absolutely. Does that happen all well, the time? Absolutely. Oh, we we are jumping timelines. Oh, absolutely, yes. Oh, okay. All the time. And all the time in miniature ways, and then there's bigger leaps that happen too. Mm. When and at those points, they become more noticeable. But mm -hmm. even then, they often go unnoticed. Because mm -hmm. why does it go unnoticed? Because we explain it away linearly. We, we, we give it cause and effect. Mm -hmm. But in truth, it was a shift. Right. How many timelines are you aware of? Or is it possibly, I mean, are you now aware of how many timelines? I mean, no, I know you're here, but where uh, do these parallels run for you? <laughs> Um, depends. Usually it has to do with the being that I sit with. Oh, well, tell me. <laughs> I'm here. No, tell um, me where my timelines are going. It's, it's, it's too many to name, and it's not how you probably would expect from a linear point of view that to look. It's not that I... S how to explain this? It's like... Um, mm. There's no, they're not like um, railroad tracks that are like this. It, right. There's it's, more. It's, it's like it's like a gradient or so, yeah. and like you could pinpoint different, many, many different inside mm -hmm. of that gradient, and they're all like parallel timelines. Mm -hmm. But so what I sense when I talk to people, or when I do work, or when oh. I when I investigate my own, not investigate, but oversee my own life, and when new decisions and inspirations come, yeah. there is an awareness of the field of probabilities. Meaning, if I say this. The, something the probable created. reality that will be activated in that being that they will shift to like everything is manipulation when it comes to communication and relationship. What do you mean manipulation? Meaning like I can't say a single word without manipulating what you're aware of. Okay, and so I can't we're, say we're, it back. Like any t any time that we open our mouth, or mm. even before, just the way we show up, the way that this is all like we're constantly influencing other people. Mm -hmm. We don't realize how often we we do this all the time. There's we have no a choice every that. minute to say this or that. Or, and Correct. Right. Yeah. So once we become aware of that, it becomes a responsibility, a duty, an honor to use that in alignment with one's true soul blueprint, which for me happens to be service to others, and it's the case for a lot of blueprints at this timing, a lot of soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the more aware you become of it, ironically, the more capable of consciously manipulating others you become. But simultaneously, the greater the responsibility, kind of like the Spider-Man 
right. one sentence. Like, <laughs> with great power comes great responsibility. But if you're service to others, you're manip you're, you influence them for the highest good. Yes, but then the journey becomes becoming aware of where you have egoic tendencies that you don't see or not, don't and, see yet. 